Thanks, Dennis. So I'm going to pick up with um, the task execution uh, service, or TESS. Um, this is a talk uh, really about Kyle Elrott's uh, work in Funnel and the API standard um, out of OHSU. Um, but Kyle, unfortunately, couldn't be here today. Uh, so what is, uh, what is TESS? What is the task execution service? Well, as Dennis mentioned, it really kind of picks up where um, Terse leaves off. Uh, whereas Terse is all about saying, okay, here's my workflow, here are my tools. Um, TESS is about uh, executing individual tools in a variety of environments. And so you can think of it as a, a Docker run, essentially. So how would you do a Docker run across many different environments? Again, inspiration for this is for projects like Peacock that had to work across 14 different cloud and HPC environments. We wish we had uh, an API standard such as this. So how does it work? Um, in terms of the actual request, you tell TESS uh, via post uh, to create a new task. You tell it the Docker tool that you want to run, the configuration that points to inputs and outputs, uh, and other information like parameterization for how many cores and that sort of thing. Um, that post will return an ID. You can later ask the test service um, what is going on with that particular execution. Um, get the information back about standard error, standard out, the files that come out if things are successful. And again, this is an abstraction layer on top of multiple cloud or even HPC implementations. So behind the scenes, you don't really need to know how this is being provisioned out, how it's being run. You can just think about it from a higher level perspective of how my individual task uh, should be run and if it's successful. So how is the standard um, uh, going in terms of uh, development and release? Uh, well, we started with use cases, which you can reach here on the shortened URL. Uh, and recently, like very recently, uh, there was a 0.2 release of the um, task execution service schema uh, done by Kyle's group. Um, what's interesting is, is much like DocStore with providing um, a high quality implementation, um, Kyle's group has produced Funnel, which is a high quality implementation of tests that I'll tell you a little bit about um, in a minute. Uh, but this is a general trend of our group. Um, we're not really super focused on um, sort of toy implementations that are reference implementations. Our group really wants to make sure that in addition uh, to creating these API standards, we also partner with folks that will make high quality implementations so you can actually use them for production work. And Funnel is an example of that. Uh, we're thinking within the next six months or so, we should see the full 1.0 production release. Uh, so Kyle Elrod, Adam Struck, and Alex Buchanan are the key sort of folks behind uh, Funnel and key contributors behind the TESS API. And we're seeing this being picked up and used by OHSU, of course, uh, but also we're seeing, uh, we just heard about Seven Bridges adding support uh, to Rabix, Executor, and other folks, including folks at the Broad and UC Santa Cruz and o uh, OICR, uh, leveraging the TESS infrastructure. So <clears throat> in terms of uh, TESS implementation, we Men, you know, I mentioned Funnel, um, but also there's a lot of interesting opportunities here. And so in addition to working on Funnel, Kyle's group has really been exploring what would it mean to have a test uh, service uh, standard to have many implementations? What would that mean for uh, things that could be built on top of tests? So you're seeing a lot of interesting work happening right now in the community, uh, driven by OHSU and others, on looking at integrating test support uh, to workflow engines like Cromwell. We just heard about uh, Rabbix, AKA Bunny, uh, Galaxy as well. There have been uh, uh, pull requests or, or forks here in each of these um, projects to explore what would it be like to add test support to these systems, but also other things like Jupyter Notebook support or Python libraries for machine learning. So this is really powerful because these um, uh, workflow engines or these tools can actually talk to a test service and send their work around to a wide variety of backends without really having to deal with the idiosyncrasies or the differences between using Azure Batch versus using uh, Amazon Batch versus using an HPC environment. So that adds a lot of value here. In terms of Funnel, um, it's going through rapid development right now. Um, we see support right now for Google Cloud, uh, Amazon Batch um, in prototype mode right now, uh, OpenStack and various HPC schedulers. So these are things that you can pick up right now, launch your Funnel instance and try submitting work to. So that's very exciting. Uh, we're also seeing um, storage support uh, for Google Cloud Storage, S3 on Amazon, and local or shared file systems. 
And the other thing that's really cool about funnel and tests right now is we're getting a lot of good feedback from the community and also feedback from the major cloud providers as well in terms of our use cases and um, our sort of deployment of funnel and tests in their environments. So that's been extremely helpful. Um, to see what it's like to actually use it, again, Kyle and, and his group has, have really focused on making this simple to get started and powerful um, to, uh, to, to use in real environments. This gives you an idea of a very simple go install process, uh, starting up the funnel service, uh, running a task uh, locally on that funnel service, talking um, to the service and asking for the current tasks that it's running, and then the last item here is showing how to actually do a remote test callout uh, to another funnel instance uh, to do that sort of remote uh, test invocation. Um, so again, uh, this information is available on the uh, OHSU GitHub uh, organization, and I encourage folks to take a look at it. And with this, I'm going to hand it over to Peter Amstutz to talk about WES, which is a complementary API uh, uh, specification uh, to tests.